Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Deutsches Haus at NYU. I'm Juliane Campfield, and I'm the director here at this uh, beautiful place, recently renovated and now all shiny and new. Uh, we are very thrilled to present this program with uh, Florian Reischauer, Eric Jarosinski, and J.M. Stim on Pieces of Berlin. Now, I'm from Berlin. I came to the United States a long time ago. When I first came here and people asked me where I was from and I would say, I'm from Berlin, there was, let's say, mild interest. Uh, one person asked me if that was close to Australia uh, and I figured they meant Austria, but uh, um, anyway, so that gives you sort of the uh, spectrum of responses. Then a little later, I noticed that things changed and when I would answer the question, where are you from? And I would say, I'm from Berlin. People were like, why are you here? So obviously something had changed about Berlin or perhaps about the perception of Berlin in the United States. To me, that was very interesting. I hadn't really noticed it so much, but of course I had been gone for a long time. And that's why events like this tonight of deep interest to me and hopefully also to you, I guess, they are because you're here and you're not celebrating either the day of German unity or Yom Kippur here, but you're here um, talking about Berlin and listening to what these three wonderful people will have to say about Berlin and this project. Um, I will introduce our panelists now and after that we'll uh, have a quick introduction by Florian of a film clip he will show us. Then we'll have the conversation uh, and the Q&A afterwards where you can discuss with them. And I should also mention that Florian's book is on sale in the front. So if you don't have a copy yet, you might want to consider buying one. Florian Reischauer is an Austrian photographer and blogger based in Berlin. For the past five years, he has been working on the blog Pieces of Berlin, attempting to capture Berlin's everyday life. In 2013, a solo exhibition of the project was shown at the Austrian Cultural Forum in Berlin, and a book of the same name has just been published, i.e. go buy one later. J.M. Stim is a writer and journalist who lives and works in Manhattan. In Central Europe, the former war correspondent and sports writer, I never knew that. You were a sports writer? For exactly one year, then they fired me. All right. <laughs> that makes sense. Became known as the founder and publisher of the acclaimed political magazine Datum and for writing the seminal biography Despite Everything, which covers the life of Austro-Jewish publishing icon Oskar Bronner. His recent work, Here is Berlin, a book-length essay on the German capital, has been translated into four languages. Last but not least, Eric Jarosinski is a writer, speaker, and hashtag failed intellectual. A former scholar of modern German literature, culture, and critical theory, he recently left academia to devote himself to his post as founding editor of Nine Quarterly, a critically acclaimed and non-existent compendium of utopian negation. Did you get that? <laughs> All right. It can, however, be found on Twitter and the opinion page of the German weekly Die Zeit. His first book, Nine, a Manifesto, will appear next year. I should also mention that Eric has coined our wonderful new Deutsches Haus at NYU slogan, Learn German if you dare, D-E-R. So just FYI. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glad you pointed that out. I should also mention that this event tonight is part of our series of events celebrating the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and celebrating our wonderful phoenix of a city, Berlin. Please join me in welcoming our panelists. <laughs>
Uh, we talked a little bit beforehand, the three of us, about the book. What we want to do really is continue this tour through the book. Um, we're going to talk about a number of the people that you've seen already in this introductory clip. And it's interesting for me to be here with a couple of Austrians talking about Berlin as an American who spent a little time in Berlin himself. Um, uh, I've probably been, I think my first trip there was 1990 or 1991, and uh, I'll not forget it because it was so cold. It was so <laughs> awfully cold in a, in a February, I think. And, and at that point, there were still um, shops open selling uh, uh, GDR-made goods. And I have a photo of myself somewhere freezing, wearing one of these standard-issue kind of East German-style winter jackets. And I'll remember that for a long time that week. And throughout, I think everyone uh, has their own kind of story about the city. And um, it's interesting for me to think about um, being here with two people uh, who have both contributed to that. Um, uh, my friend uh, uh, to my left here who wrote uh, what is a charmingly grumpy introduction uh, <laughs> to the book, um, uh, beginning with the words, uh, es stimmt schon Berlin nervt, uh, <laughs> or, or as it's elegantly translated, it's true, Berlin has become downright annoying, uh, as it says here. Um, this written by a man who recently wrote a book about um, Berlin, I believe. Uh, <laughs> and so one of the things I'll be interested in is, is thinking about ways in which uh, uh, your uh, perception of the city um, matches that, um, that, that, that uh, the, the representation we get from, from Florian um, uh, indirectly, as opposed to the pictures you take and the stories that you're telling. Um, but I wanted to start uh, simply by um, uh, uh, Klaus J.M. Uh, here explaining a little bit about um, how these two got to, to meet, because I think that tells a lot of the story of Berlin itself. So I'm going to hand it over. As Eric mentioned, we're, we're both not uh, Berlin is, we're not even Germans, we both come from Austria, and uh, not only do we come from another country, but it turned out that we grew up uh, in villages that are like five miles uh, from <laughs> away from each other. Yeah, but been at the same high school. And we went to the same high school, <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't know each other. Yeah, we. I had uh, he uh, Florian when, when he. Uh, I one day I get I get an email from this Austrian photographer who's been living in Berlin for many years, and he's like one of those Facebook friends, you know. <laughs> and uh, this was the first time that because obviously he hit me up because I had written this little essay. Here's Berlin. And it became somewhat a success, and you learned about it, obviously, but I had no idea. And then uh, we got to know each other, and it turns out that he's from that village that is like five miles from the village on the Austrian-German border that I grew up in. And uh, then I went to Berlin. That was the first time we actually met when I had a book presentation of another book I did, this biography that Juliana was mentioning. And that was the first time we met in person. <laughs> And uh, Florian introduced me to his work, and I was kind of blown away for a very simple reason, because Florian did something that I uh, had never seen somebody do before. He was taking care uh, of the so-called regular people. Yeah? He wasn't interested in the, all the, the nightlife and the hype and all these things that make Berlin this great city uh, that it is known around the world now. He was interested in everyday life, regular people, people who've been living there for a long time, people he literally meets on the street. And not only... Uh, does he take pictures of them, but he engages them into co in conversations and tries to, uh, within just uh, the best possible way I can think of uh, documentation, you know, getting that little piece in a certain period of time that tells, that gives a story, that just uh, gives you a glimpse into this world. And it was so far removed from all this 
Berlin hype thing that I just got to love it and I, I agreed to do the introduction to this book. And I'm very glad that we got this together. Thanks to you, Julian, <laughs> thank you very much. This was just the first two sentences from the introduction, <laughs> yeah. But of course I wanted to hit, uh, uh, it was of course done uh, uh, on purpose because it essentially, it, it pretty much sums up to me uh, the uh, what makes Florian's work uh, so extraordinary and different from anything that that people like him are doing in Berlin right now. That um, be, be, the, the 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 hype is so overwhelming. You know, the cool factor of Berlin has become so overwhelming that uh, it's it, it is annoying. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's it's horrible, and and people come up with all these artificial uh, uh, interpretations, and just to to, to uh, perpetuate the hype even more, and uh, forget about the spirit of the place, uh, what made it, what made the spirit in the first place, and it is a very particular kind of spirit, and a very it, it is a very special place. Um, and uh, for me, in Florian's work, it's what he captures that spirit. Yeah, we we had this talk before. You know, he he did. You might one might like the style in which he does his photographs. He does it on an analog camera, to, which is like from the 60s, you said? Yeah, right. Is something like that. <laughs> and well, one, one might like that kind of style of photography or not. Yeah? But to me, uh, it's about the essence of the work, which is not only the pictures, which is, which is not only photography. It's a Bildband in the truest sense of the word. Yeah? It's not just a photo book, it's a Bildband. It's uh, pictures with words that are, uh, you can't think of it without the words, mm. and it makes the best possible of documentation to me, yeah? which is, yeah. I'm going to pull the cane <laughs> and say, um, on the topic of words, uh, Florian, could you simply explain for those who have not seen the book yet, um, you've seen many of the photos, but you haven't seen the text, I think. Uh, could you explain um, both your goal in doing this and your method, essentially? Um, it looks like you were asking questions, but uh, if you could tell us a little bit simply about what kind of questions you were asking. The method is pretty simple. So I'm hitting the street and asking random people. Uh, about Berlin, about their connection to Berlin, why they are here, because yeah, most of the people are not really Ur-Berliners, so they just came to Berlin to, to live here. And yeah, that's what, uh, what interests me most, why, why are people here, uh, what they like and what they don't like about the city. Yeah. My overall impression is it was it was it was interesting throughout because um, if you can imagine from all these these photos, um, what Florian has done is also uh, essentially given us uh, a fragment of that conversation, um, and in a way you're kind of reconstructing what the question was. Um, and, and to my mind, a lot of the question was that of what do you like about Berlin? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what struck me about this book is mon so many of the answers are um, uh, begin with I love Berlin. Uh, or, or, or I don't want to be anywhere else. And then <laughs> the story starts to unfold much more in sort of what they say after that or in the pictures that accompany it. Uh, to me, one of the uh, starkest examples um, I was, uh, you talk to uh, someone who's homeless and essentially his answer is, oh, I love Berlin, uh, being homeless kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, or, <laughs> or, or others as well in terms of, of um, well, uh, uh, yes, I don't want to be anywhere else, but uh, I dream of going somewhere else. Mm. Uh, 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 there are some of the answers. Or um, uh, many people, uh, it struck me, uh, and this is, this is something I found very interesting about, about the book in general and what Klaus is saying about talking to uh, uh, normal people uh, or in some ways those who are not... Um, uh, 
uh, perhaps part of that scene that you were describing in terms of a, a Berlin hype of some sort, uh, you're reminded uh, about many of the realities of, of Berlin. Uh, because for me, um, Berlin was really my introduction uh, in some ways to uh, poverty in, in Germany. Uh, the year uh, that I spent, I guess it was two years um, in the uh, early 2000s, was the time when the city, of course, bankrupt, was um, sh cutting down on library hours, closing swimming pools. Um, uh, there were uh, lots of, of, of uh, uh, attempts, essentially, to um, uh, somehow get closer to a balanced budget, but you realize how these things hurt, and that there were a number of people for whom this was real money, and how what the impact was, because for many people like me, and maybe some people in this room, um, something that people seem to like about Berlin, or at least they used to, would say it's cheap, right? It's, it's this great place, and it's so affordable. And I always respond, well, it's affordable until you have to make a living in Berlin, uh, <laughs> because that's when, you really, you know, that's when your, your funding is no longer coming from uh, a scholarship or a fellowship or uh, some other source, but actually uh, things are cheaper because people have less money in a lot of ways. Um, there, are, there are reasons for that. Mm. The Kulturangebot is amazing here, um, but I can't afford to go to the theater. Um, or uh, others who will comment on, um, there's so much you can do, but with my pension, um, all I can do is this, you know, one or two things or something like this or sort of, um, there's, there's such a limit to what I, can in, uh, what I can actually do of these things that people are praising about the city. So my question, uh, and then I think we can talk about some of the specific people, um, were you seeking out a particular type or types of people and were there others also that you were sort of explicitly avoiding in a way? That it's sort of, I don't want to just talk to this group of people or this demographic because consciously or unconsciously you're making so many decisions about who it is you're going to talk to and who you're not and then also what you're going to include in the book and what you're not. Yeah, uh, probably I do, but uh, general, generally the, um, the goal of the project is to like uh, cover the whole, whole city so every kind of people, all different kind of um, like uh, yeah, social background or whatever people are doing doesn't matter, yeah, but yeah, probably uh, so after a while you uh, you you ask similar people, yeah, or like people where you feel yeah they are in this way more interesting, or I would like to get to know more about them, and yeah, but generally the goal is to to have a, like a profile of the whole city, yeah and also all kind of different districts. Yeah. Uh, why don't we start with an example um, and take a look at, at this, and you can kind of tell us the story of <laughs> at least one of these, these photographs. Um, why don't we start with the one we have right here, actually. Uh, uh, Lau that's Laura. Laura. <laughs> uh, I met her like three years ago, I think, and it's at the Hansaviertel. Also not a very famous place, I would say. And She's going to school. Uh, she, yeah, likes Berlin, but uh, <laughs> she thinks that Paris is much more beautiful and wants she would like to go there, but definitely thinks about, yeah, having a future or living in Berlin. And, yeah, one of her most favorite places, as I remember, is a rundown house, abandoned house in Friedrichshain. Yeah, which is close to the Spree, and that's where she likes to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead right away to the next one, just so we get some idea of the range of people you were talking to. Yeah, this is a very good uh, uh, <laughs> example. This guy stands out, I think, uh, in the book. Yeah, that's Lennart. He's a student, and I met him in Mitte. He's not a Berlin native, so he came to study in Berlin, and yeah, he mostly likes the like hip, cool places around at the distri district. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the photograph also, it seems like in terms of the style, looks a lot different than many of the others that you're going to see. Um, to me, it was almost one of the most posed or most polished in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, can we look at one more? But that's typically like meet the style, for example, if yeah. you talk about yeah, it just stereotypes. You, you can kind yeah. of tell with even without knowing which part of the city they're from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, it's funny because to me, I mean, the, the um, what are they called? Flasterstein, uh, uh, what are they called in English? Are they cobblestones? Cobbles. You know, everyone knows these things. But uh, it's funny, it's one of the things that you see evenly uh, throughout so many parts of the city. Um, and it's, it's funny because when I think of pieces of Berlin, that's actually something I think about <laughs> almost immediately. Um, I'll remember, uh, I remember um, shortly before May 1st, I was living in Kreuzberg uh, that year. And I remember a few days before May Day, which is uh, Kreuzberg is home to a major May Day parade and sometimes a major May Day uh, parade riot uh, afterwards. Um, and of course, as we know, uh, 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 under the pavement is the beach uh, that uh, these cobblestones are often pulled up and start flying at police officers once it gets late. Um, and I remember <laughs> I'm around my neighborhood uh, the few days beforehand, um, all of these construction uh, workers with uh, these machines that pack down the stones uh, even, even, even more tightly. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, and I've also noticed some Berliners like to use these uh, at the bottom of your flower pot uh, as well for the drain. I see uh, Ulrike Dresner, who I, who I know, uh, I remember she has this lining her flower pots. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to me um, throughout the kind of different people that you're talking to, but that there are lots of similarities uh, between them, but often um, they're talking to each other without knowing it. I mean, there are those who are complaining about um, sort of... Uh, uh, the culture that maybe this law student really enjoys, that there's a lot going on, um, that uh, there's a lot of action, uh, that um, uh, uh, there are a lot of young people in clubs and so on. And at the same time, the next page, you have someone who's, who's talking about how exactly these people are driving up the rents and exactly these people um, are changing the city in some way that they don't particularly like, um, et cetera. And so I, I like that juxtaposition throughout because it's... Yeah, and that's generally a big thing. I mean, uh, like for me, Berlin is somehow a, a conglomerate of 1,000 villages, which all together form a big city. And so walking from one village to another, uh, it's like, yeah, everything can change rapidly. You get totally different people, totally different ideas, uh, demography. And so, yeah, it's like, yeah, a lot of different worlds put together uh, and living next to each other. Uh. We haven't talked about this man yet, so we have another story. <laughs> story here. Uh, that's Ludwig. Uh, he's in. He's retired, and he's retired at 51, <laughs> and lives in Charlottenburg, so in the old West Berlin, and yeah, he likes that everything is well packed in Berlin, for example, yeah, <laughs> and the public transport system I think he likes also, yeah. Yeah, there's also sort of a continuing story throughout uh, this in, in people's comments about mass transit, about how much they like it or how much they hate it. Actually, this is an interesting one. That's Mr. Rolex. Uh, he comes from Baden-Württemberg, but doesn't like particularly the people who come from uh, Baden-Württemberg <laughs> because, uh, in his opinion, they drive up the rents, you say like this? Yeah, yeah, and like the other, the main actors in gentrifying uh, districts, so... Huh? In Berlin, yeah, yeah. Did you ask him how he got his nickname? No, I didn't. I should have, yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> what, so. what I remember from his description is what he says he likes about Berlin is how dirty it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and chaotic. And in fact, yeah. the job, one of his jobs is putting up posters. I mean, that's what he's got in his hand, and that's what yeah. he's doing right here, yeah, right exactly. at the moment. Yeah, And he's doing Bühnenbild. English? Uh, stage design? Stage design, think, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but to me, that was also kind of a typical, mm -hmm. in a way, story, but also, in a way, kind of the typical contradiction in so many of the stories of people who moved to Berlin. It's, um, mm. uh, I moved here uh, because I didn't like where I'm from, because I don't like people where I'm from. Uh, I'm cool, right? Um, uh, the others, they're ruining it for me. Right? I mean, it's the paradox we all know. If when we're tourists somewhere, we hate seeing other tourists, right? Because they're <laughs> reminding us of what we're doing uh, and how uncool it actually uh, is. Um, but uh, I'm wondering if, what is our next picture? Because I think, yeah, this is, this is a, 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 nice, a nice juxtaposition in a way because many of the people, what they will say in the 
um, what they seem to like about the city is you can do whatever you want, you have this great freedom, no one looks at you funny, etc. Uh, the law student, for instance, <laughs> no one looks at you funny, you don't stand out here, right? I don't know exactly where he would stand out, apart yeah. from certain neighborhoods in Berlin. Yeah, he would, uh, definitely. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but this was a very different story, and, and this introduced some other realities you know, into this picture of Berlin that's often celebrated simply. Mm. Yeah. She was born in Thailand and then she met her German husband. She was working like a tourist agent, so she was planning trips and so on, and then she moved to Berlin and she's totally not happy in Berlin uh, because it's, yeah, beside the weather. Uh, it's, uh, for her, she got kind of lost and is sad and, and also she has to face uh, like everyday racism and like she totally doesn't feel welcome in Berlin. Yeah. But she want to stay here because of her child and because of the social service and so that uh, so social security and the um, um, <laughs> all the yeah. social support system of some yeah sort. for example and that you get social good uh, yeah. yeah could you comment now just generally about um, uh, you are approaching strangers and talking to them. Um, uh, what was that experience like? I mean, I'm sure that you had some some uh, people who were not interested in talking to you. Yeah, of course. So uh, generally at the beginning it was pretty weird uh, or also like kind of a self-therapy for me to, yeah, just hit the street and, and uh, approach strangers and talk with them or like try to in, uh, get them into a conversation. And so, but after a while it, it uh, pretty fast it became kind of a routine and so, but yeah, usually I, I would say like 50% of the people I ask, they, they w would like to take part. So I just ask them if, yeah, I introduce myself and uh, tell them that I'm doing a project about Berlin's everyday life. And uh, so now I'm here in your district and uh, yeah, would you like to take part? And so that's the beginning of the conversation. Then I take the photo. So. Uh, right after I've introduced myself and I also take only one photo to capture that, I don't know, special moment, yeah, and also to, to try to have, uh, to take a kind of, beside the technique I use, um, a unique uh, picture which I can't re reproduce again or like reshoot again yeah and yeah I made the experience that for me uh, that's the way or the best way to to capture that moment in this kind of how I approach it and that I only take one photo and that's it so that it's not staged in a way and that it's spontaneous and as r possibly be real than it is yeah. Uh, I'm wondering also just, um, I assume that people hear some sort of Austrian accent, right? I mean, did you feel like they were, uh, people were talking to you as an outsider, you know, someone who wouldn't know much no. about the city? Or, or how did you, how would you characterize the interaction? Most of the people, they, they hear that, that I'm from Austria or from Switzerland. And, <laughs> and so, but it was never like a disadvantage. So even the the Sometimes it's it's funny because they say, ah, yeah, okay, you're doing a project f about Berlin, but you're from Austria, so we need an Austrian doing a project about Berlin, something like this. <laughs> Sometimes funny, but yeah, generally it's that they are even interest as more interested in me actually, and then ask, yeah, why you're here, why you are here, and what do you like about Berlin, and so on. Yeah. Excellent. Should we look at one other example here as well? Yeah, this was one of my favorites, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you could simply tell us the story uh, uh, about this one. Yeah. So that was actually right next to my flat where I was living and where Klaus was lately. <laughs> and yeah, I was actually, I, I, I wasn't there. My purpose was not going out doing some... Uh, Portraits for pieces of Berlin, but I, I, I saw him sitting there doing his job with his chair sitting in the snow and Yeah, then I grabbed my 
my camera and I asked him. Maybe you should explain what does he actually yeah. do. I think he's uh, taking care that the traffic lights are working, or like checking if everything is fine. <laughs> and his biggest complaint about Berlin is uh, all of the uh, the road work uh, <laughs> being slowed down on his way through the city. That's his biggest complaint. And uh, I found a certain irony in that he, he works on stoplights. Uh, but I love this picture because uh, when I, you first see it, uh, maybe it's just me, but he's, he looks like he's painting, right? I mean, it's such a, this, 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 this study uh, and, and also um, essentially set up uh, in the middle of the snow here. And it's, and it's a lovely picture um, that I could imagine, you know, uh, uh, is, is, is one of these scenes that you just happen upon, whereas yeah. others, whereas others you, you, you're, you're drawn to the person for some particular reason and maybe not the context, mm -hmm. right? But here it seems like it's the situation yeah. in a way more than anything else. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering throughout, I mean, the, the types of conversations that you had, um, has there been, uh, uh, I think you might have mentioned, but I'm, I don't sure, I'm not sure. Um, have you encountered anyone since doing the project, you know, who you've seen again? people or people who have in somehow stayed in touch with you mm. or is there something that that kind of developed out of this in terms of your own relationships with people mm. yeah there are some who keep uh, following the project and um, some who write me again and yeah it also happens that after a while so like in the subway or whenever being around in the city uh, that um, I see somebody there yeah, who have uh, uh, photographed like maybe three or four years ago and yeah it happens yeah on a regular basis yeah and for example Rolex I met recently again and he couldn't remember me <laughs> and then it rang a bell when I told him um, uh, that that we have met like three years ago and that I'm doing this project and blah 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 and yeah, and I said like that, hey, Rolex, so from the other side of the, of the, of the road. And he was like, oh, okay, who are you? And well, well, I think you said, he, he, was said he, you said he was... Why the you remember my name? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty obvious, but <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Very nice. Should we go ahead to one more? This is actually someone I was referencing. Uh, yeah, you have mentioned before. Um, that we talked about someone who's, who's homeless and loves Berlin, apart from being homeless in Berlin. Um, but uh, it's interesting too, we were talking about this, this is, I think he said his favorite street is the Karmax Alley, uh, which when we were thinking about it, I think is one of the most deserted streets uh, often <laughs> in the, the city. It's probably not the best, the best setup in some ways, but it's interesting in that I'm wondering, um, uh, were some people hesitant to tell their stories if, if essentially they might have circumstances they don't necessarily want to want to talk about? I can imagine that that might be more difficult. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering how um, you did this over time. I mean, did you get more uh, comfortable somehow asking certain types of questions you might not have asked in the beginning, right? Based on your experience, um, because I imagine you're, you're going to be. Uh, uh, in a way, you want to capture a certain moment, a certain person, but I have the sense that there's a there's an ethic, you know, to what you're doing as well in terms of of uh, how deeply you want to pry mm. right into into their own lives. Um, so I'm wondering what that experience was like. It always depends on the person. Um, so I begin with the same questions about Berlin and then the city, and then yeah, it depends on the person. Uh, some just and that's also like kind of typical. Berlinerish, uh, that uh, yeah, they they start talking. They 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 tell you everything, almost. So especially old people, and uh, yeah, it, it totally depends on the person. I'm I'm not somebody who is digging for something. So if if the person wants to tell me, uh, tell me, I'm happy about it. I, I want to hear, hear uh, all these stories. I'm I'm super interested. In it. That's why I do this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it also happens that uh, I chat with them just for like four or five minutes, and that's it. Yeah, and without any deep conversation or yeah. Well, this is uh, actually a point where I think I wanted to ask Klaus a question uh, before we go back to a couple of specific examples, which is um, whether the uh, image of Berlin that uh, came out of this book for you, at least, how that aligns with the Berlin that you described in your own Berlin book. 
Um, is this the same place, uh, or is this, this somewhere completely different? It is the same place, absolutely, but, uh, oh my God, um, phew. I mean, when it comes to the book that I wrote, this, this is much more democratic, so to say. Yeah? M my book came out, it really came out, it wasn't intended to be like that, but it came out as an ode to the city, and this is a much more realistic, down-to-earth, kind of sober look of what this place is about, and it's, it's much more democratic, so to say, and it gives a much more realistic picture of the place. Yeah? Uh, when it comes to my own, I, I wrote this book in a frenzy because I love the place, and it's, I, think, I still think, I've been living in New York for the past five years now, but I, I just went, I, I actually came back from my last trip to Berlin only a week ago, and I still love it. I still think of it as the best place on earth. And I know why. The, the good thing about it is, though, it reaffirmed me why I left in the first place. And what? Tell us. Well, you know those kind of things that are like too good? Like they, they're too good and they're going to. You, you know if you're going to keep doing them, you're going to drown. And you, it's, it's one of these places to me. You know? It's a very personal thing. I, I very consciously put myself in, I think of New York as a, as a good jail. You know? <laughs> like New York keeps you in check at all times. You've got to function here. Because I lived in Berlin for exactly two years. If I would have continued the lifestyle I had in Berlin, in New York, I would have been broke, homeless, and probably would have contracted all kinds of horrible STDs within three months. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the best place there is, and it's the most horrible place there is when, you got a, when you're a weak character like me. So yeah, I, I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I had some questions about your childhood, but I'll leave those <laughs> till later. Um, so maybe one last uh, or image. I'm not sure how many more we've got. Um, and then we'll open it up to, to questions. Is that our last one? OK. Um, this might actually uh, be a, a good point to, to discuss um, and to open this up to questions, be they about form and, or content or about context or um, whatever it is that you learned in, in, in doing this project, uh, et cetera. So any hands? I'm just going to start because, first of all, I forgot uh, the thank yous. I forgot to thank my wonderful staff for the work on this uh, brilliant conversation. I also forgot to thank the German Academic Exchange Service for their wonderful support. Having said that, my question would be like, could you imagine doing a project like this in any other city? For example, now that you're in New York, would you feel, or do you even consider that question? Or is that project really just focused on the circumstances of your life in Berlin? Um, yeah, generally it's pretty much focused on, on, on Berlin, but yeah, if I'm abroad or somewhere else, uh, it always came to my mind that I would also like to do it here because it's about the people. It's not about just the people in Berlin, uh, also interested in the people living in New York, of course, it's the same thing. Uh, and yeah, sometimes I do kind of an ex pieces of Berlin excursion. That means if I'm somewhere else, I just do the same thing that I yeah ask people on the street and yeah, about their lives and yeah, what they think about Berlin, or what came to their mind when they hear about Berlin. Um, and what does uh, It depends on the place, of course, but yeah, usually he you hear um, stories about the wall or the war, yeah, stuff like this, yeah. And also that it's a very hip and artistic city. <laughs> so. <laughs> so those are the like main answers. Yeah. Hi, I just wanted to know, 
do you really only take one frame each time or just um, one frame, one single frame of each person? Yeah, one photo. So That's sometimes it. does nothing uh, Actually, it works out every time. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's uh, <laughs> no, that's true. It's it's not a lie. Yeah, it was. So <laughs> no, I, uh, I believe him. That, um, yeah, I'm I'm using a, an old Aqua Vintage oh. camera, and uh, it's also somehow um, playing around with coincidences, because for example, the bellows of the camera. Uh, the material got barsh uh, over the years, and so you got little light holes, and you got those slight incidences on the negative. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's interesting, but it has never like destroyed the whole picture, so that you can't see the face at all, for example. Or yeah, somehow I got I got the result, which I like. Yeah, yeah they're beautiful, and the haze and the light leaks. So those are normal. Yeah, yeah, uh, normal in this. Yeah. And could you say something? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it ha happen yeah. often. Yeah. Um, and could you say something about your training and background in photography or mm. self-taught? I started photography in Vienna, yeah. And then I started generally like playing around with old cameras. I, I was into Polaroid a lot when they still did the films. And so, yeah, I'm pretty stuck into analog photography in general, yeah. It's beautiful work. Thank you. Where are the people? One person, maybe. Could you explain that? Uh, um, it's not New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, when I take the photo, I try to concentrate on the very single person and to to be totally focused on that person. And n of course, to have the surroundings, but just the city as a... Um, but as the a surroundings also... Also... The of the city. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's true. Inside yeah. Inside that, those surroundings, those mm. environments. Yeah. So yeah. you have really given an impression of Berlin aside from the individuals you photograph. Mm. Mm. There are also photographs that Florian has uh, without any people. Uh, at all, <laughs> um, just essentially of landscapes, let's say, uh, and you seem to have a penchant for sort of deserted landscapes mm. uh, uh. Uh, throughout. Um, and I'm wondering uh, to what extent you know that's part of this project uh, that you have this uh, pictures of. Well, here, this is probably the most desolate uh, <laughs> that I could find. Um, uh, yeah. Lovely image, actually. Yeah, yeah uh, I, have a, I have a special thing for urban wastelands because it was a totally new thing when I moved to Berlin. Uh, in Vienna, y it doesn't exist. It, yeah. There it is. <laughs> so, in fact, that Berlin is changing rapidly and all those... As a result, all those wastelands disappear. Uh, it was also like kind of a goal of the project to document all those places, because in my opinion, those places are very important for a city. Uh, it personally, for me, it gives me room to breathe. Uh, it's it's just just the place where nothing happens within a metropole, within a big city, and that. Uh, yeah, for, for me, it makes, makes it's, it's totally relaxing and liberating in one way. A, a place without any purpose, like in, in a world where we live, that usually there is a shop and there's a place you, you can or uh, should consume and so on. And so, yeah, in the middle of a big city, having places like this is, for me, totally, totally relaxing and calming down a city somehow. Did you always know it would take a book form, or did you think that, uh, did it first start online and you're showing it that way, or did you think it would be a, a gallery show? And when did you decide to include the text as um, opposed to just photos? Uh, so at the beginning, when I moved to Berlin, I, I just took, took photos. I, I had my camera always with me, and there was no special idea about doing a certain project. It was just like a diary uh, capturing 
a place I really like, and uh, also I, I didn't know how long I would, will stay in Berlin. So, uh, and after a while, I got this, uh, yeah, kind of big uh, pile of photos, and yeah, I wanted to do something with it. And so, yeah, and after a while, taking photos just of landscapes, I got also a little bit annoyed by it, and after a while, it's always the same. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It, uh, I wanted to know more about the city and 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 about the variety of 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 the cities so I yeah I put the focus on the people and that's how it started and then it became a blog um and yeah after 5 years I I thought about that's a uh, good time to publish a book like a recap of the whole thing Hello. If you could just tell us the neighborhoods you you like to shoot the most, and why the neighborhoods you don't like to shoot, and why, and the neighborhoods that you're looking to explore more in the next years. Uh, yeah, that's also the thing. So I try to to go everywhere, but yeah, that's also not possible, or I don't have that time to <laughs> to go everywhere because it's a big city, but. Yeah, I find myself more and more at certain places, and, and those are just places which are not well known or hardly anybody is going, or yeah, not the hotspots. Yeah, but yeah, besides that, I also do a lot in my neighborhood. I'm from Neukölln, and yeah, that's also like a kind of gentrified hip place. Did you feel you understood Berlin a bit better having spoken to and, and met so many different people in the city? Because as a foreigner living in Berlin, I'm still trying to grasp what it is that makes the city what it is after so many years. Uh, yeah, that definitely um, happens, yeah. With all the people I get to know, all the ideas, all the opinions, and it's also, for, for me, that's, that's one of the most important things, um, because I, I meet so many people uh, who I would would meet uh, within my social surroundings, and and that's for me a very important thing, because otherwise I, I I wouldn't meet them or just by coincidence somehow. Yeah, so you always keep in touch in this way with the whole city. Yeah, while meeting all those guys. Uh, yeah, my, I, I just want to add to that. That 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 is that is actually th what it comes down to. Because especially in a city like Berlin, people tend to stay in their neighborhoods. Yeah, right. Yeah? <laughs> they go out very. It's sell. It very it happens very rarely that they. If you leave, if you live in Neukölln, you stay in you stay in your Keats. Yeah? We call them you Keats fascists. You, you stay in Friedrichshain, <laughs> and this is one of the things that I love about Florian. Because and, and it was also. Be, uh, when I was living there, I was doing the exact same thing, just in a different, uh, in, in a different fashion. I went to the last stops of of the subways or the trams, and I walked home from there. Yeah? And that that was my approach, and and uh, I, I just and very very few people do that because most of them, I mean, most of them don't have time to do that. Yeah, because it takes a lot of time to go home from Spandau to Neukölln, <laughs> <laughs> or to walk home from Köpenick to Neukölln or whatever, but it pays off, and and this is and and you get these kind of results, and that people who actually live there are amazed by it because they would never go out. You know, where 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 have you been? Yeah, and just what uh, just one example from the trip I I recently came back to I. Went to, I'm a soccer guy. I went to a match by a club called Tennis Borussia, which has a very liberal following, a very left wing following, very progressive, and it was great fun. And most of all, is uh, uh, most of its fan culture is about left wing, uh, actually liberal politics and not about the actual football. And a week later, I went to uh, Beef to Dynamo because I have a few f friends who used to be hooligans in the 90s, and now they're the old guard and the old wise people who know when, how to, when to pick a fight nowadays. And it was two totally different realms. And I went back to my kids and people, and I told them, and, uh, and the people just looked at me like I'm a lunatic. Yeah? And it's just about, but 
this, this is what I love so much about Florian's work, because he does the same thing. He goes out and he confronts himself. He's not afraid to confront himself with the different realities. And this is what makes it so special, because very few people, I mean, basically nobody who lives there does that now. <laughs> Maybe the, maybe because he's Austrian, you know, because he's an out, because he's an outsider as well. You know, he we know the language and everything, but we're outsiders and in, and insiders, yeah, somewhat. In terms of the mise en scène you choose for your photos, like I mean, you said you do it fairly quickly, right? You you choose the photo fairly quickly, but how do you decide? Like I mean, is this sort of an intuitive choice on you know taking this photo from one meter away, two meters away, or like How how do you make these decisions, and do you at all tell your subjects anything, or do you just let them sit or stand where they decide or where they are in the minute that you ask them? What so what is really, how spontaneous is it? <laughs> yeah, it's very spontaneous, and mostly the people don't have time to ask any questions, somehow. So I I don't want to push them, but uh, if they ask, uh, I just tell them, stay where you are, be like you are, and look into the camera. Yeah. That's it, actually. Yeah. And then over doing it, how far I need to stand away from the, or the distance. Yeah. Mm. So that's routine in the end. Thank you for coming. Thanks to our panelists. And uh, thanks for coming to New York. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>